First of all, I would like to pay my high respect to the teacher Lee Kong Sok Chan. My name is Satsinit. Today, I'm very honored to present one topic, and it's about a comparison between Cambodia and China. And it has six main parts. First is about historic background, second, foreign policy, third, political system, or four, political um, party and election, and a uh, five political regime. And the last point is about the actor or the leader of the countries. And now I'm going to present about the uh, Cambodia country, which is the first about history background of Cambodia. Cambodia is a country in Southeast Asia, which have a long age. And the first, the early civilization found in Nang Spien in Bong province, northwest of Cambodia, and which confirmed the presence of the Han Hanbin, a stone tool, which is uh, from the 6,000 to 7,000 BCE and the pottery from 4200 BCE. And for the first kingdom was Hunan, uh, which is from the first to sixth century. The first monarch was Queen Salma, and the capital of this uh, Hunan is in Bapnum, in Prairang province. And of and the Funan may have extended the area across between Bapnum in uh, Brevan uh, to the Ok O in Kien Chang uh, in the southern Vietnam. And the after that we have Chen La Kingdom, which is from sixth to eighth century. Chenla was the basal of the Hunan, and it became an independent state in 550 CE. And after that, we have the Ungo Kingdom was from the 9th to 15th century, which is the golden age of all the time. And the King Soya Waterman II, who built the Ungo Wat, and extended the territories to the success war with the Thai, Champa, and Vietnam. And after a cold period, the Cambodian king moved the city from Ungo, uh, from Siem Reap to Phnom Penh. And in 1863, Cambodia stayed under control of the French colony and got in the and then got independent on the 1953. And after that, uh, we have the Khmer Rouge period, which is from 1975 to 1979. Uh, Cambodian people at least 1.5 million were killed or died. And after the recovery, Cambodia had a national election in 1993. And today, Cambodia is still a developing country. And next, uh, the foreign policies of Cambodia. The Kingdom of Cambodia pursues a foreign policy that protects and promotes its national interest by undertaking the following five main tasks. First is protect national independent sovereignty territorial integrity and the neutrality, maintain peace, security, stability, order, and social unity. And the second is foster more friendship abroad based on the spirit of national independence. Third, promote economic diplomacy. Fourth, continue to support and strengthen the multilateralism. And for the last is and change the quality, efficiency, and capability of the Cambodian diplomat. And move to the political regime of Cambodia. 
Cambodia is a constitutional monarchy. The current king, His Majesty, uh, Majesty Narodam Sehamoni, ascended the throne on the October 24 and 2004. And the constitution said that Cambodia has heard to the policy of multiple party liberal democracy and the Cambodian people are the owner of the country and according to article 51 in the constitution also stipulate that the power of the legislature the executive and the judiciary are separated and then we have the political party and election in Cambodia Cambodia is a one party dominant state with the Cambodian People Party in power. And the Cambodian legislature um, chosen through the election, which has every five years. And the Parliament of Cambodia have two chambers, which is one, the National Assembly, and another one is the Senate. This National Assembly of Cambodia have 125 members. Each election for a five-year term by proportional representation. And the Senate has 62 members, mostly indirectly elected. And the three main political parties have dominated Cambodia politics over the last decade. Uh, have the, the Cambodian People Party, CPP, the United Front of an Independent, Neutral, Peaceful and Cooperative Cambodia and the Cambodian National Recruits Party CNOP, which is dissolved in the uh, 2017. For the political system of Cambodia, Cambodia practice a parliamentary system which is based on soft, flexible, separate of power which has the executive, legislative, and the judicial. For executive power is exercised by the royal government on behalf of and with the exit of the monarch. And the legislative power is vested in a bicameral legislature composed of the National Assembly, which has the power to build on draft law, and the Senate has the power of review. And the judiciary is tasked with the protection of the right and liberty of the citizen and with begin the impartial arbiter of the discourse. And the latter actor of Cambodia, as we know that Hun Sen is a Cambodian political who served as a prime minister of Cambodia since 1985. He was born on April 5, 1952, and he was educated in the Buddhist monastery in Phnom Penh. And in the late 1960, he joined the Communist Party of Cambodia, and in 1970, he joined the Khmer Rouge. Uh, during the Khmer Rouge, he flew to Vietnam, uh, joining the troops. They are opposed the Khmer Rouge, and then he, uh, when he fly back to Cambodia, when the Vietnamese installed new government in 1979, and when and he was a minister of foreign, uh, office, foreign affairs, and. He became a prime minister in 1955. He is the longest serving head of government of Cambodia and the long, one of the longest serving leader in the world. And this, that's all for Cambodia. And next for China, the history background of China which is that from the first dynasty is believed to be in a Xia dynasty, which formed somewhere around 2250 BC. And then we have the Shang or Yin dynasty gained power around the 14th century BC. 
And after that, the Han Dynasty, which lasts over 400 years, from uh, 200 sec BC to 202 AD, was one of the most influential in China history. Much of the culture today was created during the Han Dynasty, and then the last of the great dynasty, the Qing dynasty, began in the 1644. Um, during the, the dynasty, uh, the Western influence, European strap, and a lot of war served to weaken China. And in the early 90s, the people of China began to reform. A new leader, Mao Zedong, uh, who took over the communists, uh, lead the CCP uh, in a long march and to the distance of the area in China. And today, China is a ma major world power and the second largest economy in the world. And the foreign policy of China in 2012 China has expanded its foreign policy ambition on a global scale with a special emphasis on the East China Sea. It is investing heavily on global infrastructure, citing desire for the economic integration, and it also investing uh, on strategy locate, location, for secure a threat and security interest. And it called this program One Bell, One Road, and the Maritime Seal Road, which is see as the part of its cell of cell surveillance. Nancy. The political regime of China, the Chinese constitution stated that the People's Republic of China is a socialist state under the People's Democratic Dictatorship led by the working class and based on the alien of worker and a person. And the, for the state, again, apply the principle democratic centralism and the People's Republic China is a uh, one and only world uh, socialist state, especially aiming to build a communist. And the Chinese government has been variously described as a communist and a socialist, but also as a authoritarian and a corporatist. And for the Political party and the election of China. Election in China are based on a Paris called electoral system whereby the local people congress are directly elected and all the higher level of the people congress up to the national people congress and the national uh, legislature uh, is indirectly elected by the people. Congress level uh, immediately below. And in the practice, only one political party holds effective power at the national level, namely the CCP. And the eight minor parties are part of the United Front and also take a part in the political system, but they have uh, limited power at the national level. And for the political system of China, the government of People Republic of China is a collectively the state authority of in China under exclusive political leadership of the Communist Party of China (CPC). It consists of the legislative, executive, military, supervisory, judicial and the procuratorial branch. And for the last point, the letter actor of the China. Xi Jinping is a Chinese politician who served as the general secretary 
of the Chinese Communist Party CCP and the chairman of the Central Military Commission CMC since 2012 and the president of the People's Republic of China COP or C since 2013 and in 2010 he became a vice chairman of the CPC the Central Military Commission and Y Chairman Central Military Commission of uh, the POC and this all for uh, of the presentation about the two countries which is China and Cambodia. Uh, thank you for your uh, paying attention and listening. Uh, hope you can uh, understand well about the two country, and uh, I'm so happy that I I can present this topic. And that's all. Goodbye.